Thank you for joining us, Friendship Christian Church, Friendship Ministries YouTube channel. We're still in Zechariah. We're still in chapter 11. We're still talking about uh, events that are being foretold of what's going to happen in A.D. 70. This is written around 515 B.C. So we're in uh, chapter 11. We're in verse 5. Before we get there, let us uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for giving us your word. We just pray for guidance and understanding by the Holy Spirit that you bring us the proper understanding and conclusions. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're talking about shepherds and flocks. Shepherds, of course, being the religious leaders of the Israelites. Uh, let's go to chapter 11, verse 5. Uh, their buyers slaughter them and go unpunished. These are the buyers of the people. Those who sell them say, praise the Lord, I'm rich. Their own shepherds do not spare them. So what happened was, uh, at a time of occupation, some people are going to turn on some others. They're going to turn others in uh, for infractions in order to reap rewards for turning them in. So you have all of this and you even have the religious rulers that are not looking out for the Israelites. They're also reporting on them, turning them in, uh, reaping benefits of turning them in, collecting bounties, what have you. Uh, it's all everyone for themselves. Even the priests are just out for themselves. And that's what this means here. And now God is explaining why this is going on in verse 6. For I will no longer have pity on the people of the land, declares the Lord. I will give everyone into the hands of their neighbors and their king. So he's letting this happen. He's setting up the circumstance. He's allowing the bad people, he's allowing the invaders to do what they will to the Israelites. And he's allowing the kings, the magistrates, the tax collectors, the priests, the high priests, he's letting everybody just run amok. And, and everybody's just out for themselves. And God is just hands off. I'm not protecting anybody, he's saying. They will devastate the land. Uh, that is the oppressors, the invaders. They're going to devastate the land. And I will not rescue anyone from their hands. So when the uh, Romans come and occupy Judah, he, God is not going to put the, the Romans out. When the Messiah comes, Jesus, when he comes, Jesus doesn't kick the Romans out. This is foretold here. In 515 B.C., the, the Romans are not going to be driven out. And in A.D. 70, there's this huge revolt. The Romans prevail, and the temple is destroyed. It's foretold right here that God is not going to rescue anyone from their hands. Verse 7, So I shepherded the flock, Marked for slaughter, uh, he, he fed them everything he could feed them spiritually, materially. He says they're, they're marked for slaughter. He says they're, they're, they're marked uh, for destruction of the Romans coming in A.D. 70. They're, they're already marked for this because they refuse to be obedient. So he's telling them, you're back now from Babylon captivity, you're rebuilding the temple, but you're going to fall right back into where you were. You're going to forsake me, and I am not going to save you. Uh, then he says, particularly the, the oppressed of the flock. The oppressed of the flock are not your elite. They're not the religious elite. They're not the social elite. They're not the political elite. Everybody else, they're the ones that are going to pay the highest price. Then I took two staffs. Now we know what a staff is. Uh, shepherds have a staff to help prod or rescue a sheep 
uh, and we hear about the staff in Psalm 23. They knew all about the staff, and God says here, Then I took two staffs, one called favor and the other called union, and I shepherded the flock. Now the staff favor, favor means that the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jews, they have found favor with God. So this one staff is now going to represent those people. The other staff union represents the peace within the people. And so what you have here is that peace, that peaceful bond between the people, seeing themselves as one people under God, is they're going to break that. They're going to uh, report on each other. They're going to turn each other in for bounties and rewards. So you have the staff that's the people, and you have the staff that's the peaceful union of the people. And that's what he has going into verse 8. And verse 8 is very important in talking about the future of what's going to be like in A.D. 70. What's going to be like? And verse 8, In one month I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock detested me, and I grew weary of them. So in one month, and that just means in so many years, I got rid of three shepherds. In so many years, we've gotten rid of uh, three high priests, three individuals that were high priests. Uh, Boyce, a theologian, says that these are, uh, are three classes of individuals, prophets, priests, and kings. Uh, but they're, they're the ruling class, and the majority of the rule was either with a king or the high priest. Those two shared rules. So we can look at it as looking in time of the temple. Three priests, high priests, have gone past. And I grew weary of them. And, said the Lord in verse 9, I will not be your shepherd. God is not going to rescue them from destruction. Let the dying die and the perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. Uh, let them devour each other. Let them fight each other. Let them destroy each other. Give them enough rope. Let them hang each other. He's, he's had enough. He's had enough of them turning away. He's had enough. And uh, so then I took my staff. Remember, God introduced to the two staffs. He says, then I took my staff called favor and broke it. What a horrible thing to do. Revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. When they came back out of bondage with Babylon, God kind of put a protective hedge around Jerusalem and kept all the other uh, countries at bay because Israel was the favored people. And he had a hedge of protection around them. He uh, kept the others from invading. There was no invasion anymore once they came back until the Romans. And now he's breaking that staff. He's breaking that covenant uh, I had made with all the nations. He's, he's taking away that hedge of protection. And he's taking away the, the chains that kind of held back the dogs of war from these nations that wanted to devour Israel. He, he let them go. He let loose the chains. He took away the hedge of protection. It was revoked on that day. And so the oppressed of the flock who were watching me knew it was the word of the Lord. So we have that let the dying die, uh, bring judgment by letting the dying die. Bring judgment by letting the oppressors come in 
and win and take control and hold the land. The broken staff was he's allowed the people to be attacked. So he's allowing the Romans to come in, be the oppressors. That's what they were in Jesus' day. And they were going to be victorious against the Israelites once again in AD 70. So this really happened during the Roman siege at Jerusalem. Uh, they, uh, Jerusalem, they revolted. We had the great siege. They walled off Jerusalem. Nobody could come in to rescue those people in Jerusalem. No food could be brought in, no provisions, no water, no nothing. It took two years, two years of the Romans just marching around that outside wall, building this ramp to come into Jerusalem. Two years. And finally they came. The, the, the people were decimated. There was a famine. Uh, there was starvation. And the ramp was built, mechanized <laughs> in a sense, all these wheeled carts and war mobiles and all these infantry and archers and everybody, they all came up the ramp and down into Jerusalem. There was a fortress called Masada, uh, supposed to be 900 uh, holdouts at Masada. Masada was taken when the Romans finally got there, got into the fortress, uh, they found bodies. They had all committed suicide rather than be taken captive by the Romans. So God just took his hands off and said, have at it. And they got uh, destroyed. They got oppressed. And the ones that paid the highest price were not the elite. It was not the high priest or the priests. It was not the kings. It was not the social elite. Uh, for they cut and run. It was the average person, the population at large, paid the highest price. And uh, uh, we'll stop it there for this time. Uh, go back and read about Masada. Go back and read about the siege of Jerusalem in AD 70. Uh, there was even a mini-series out about Masada. Uh, it's very, very interesting how the Romans took their time and made it to where they could uh, come in and suppress the revolt and tear everything down. They had allowed the Jews to have their temple. They had allowed the Jews to have their businesses. They had allowed them to do a lot of freedom things as long as they were obedient to Caesar. Well, they revolted. First they revolted against God. That's how the Romans got there in the first place. Now they're revolting against Caesar. And then we have the siege of Jerusalem where they lost their freedom once again. The Romans cut off their businesses, cut off their temple, cut off their worship. Uh, really destroyed everything because now they could no longer do sacrifices to seek uh, God's help, to seek forgiveness, to be repentant. The Romans destroyed that. So read about this real history that took place, and we're seeing it prophesied here uh, so many years ahead of time. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, please study, read, and pray. Until we meet again, let us pray. Father, we just ask that you keep us healthy and safe until we meet again and that you help us in our studies. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and may we all go in peace.